Hello everyone, and welcome to my latest build, The Mistress of Mysteries. This is, obviously, a character based around the Order of Mysteries faction. Before we get started on this video properly, I do want to warn people that there's potential spoilers about the Order of Mysteries quests. I'll be trying to avoid anything too big, but if you haven't done that questline yet and want to go in completely fresh, then stop watching now. Additionally, I'd like to say that this isn't an incredibly powerful build. If you're looking for one of those one-shot wonder builds, then you're in the wrong place. This is a challenging but fun role-playing build. One that can be very rewarding to play, but it isn't going to stomp through events or speed through quests. The special for this character is 10 Strength, 6 Perception, 1 Endurance, 4 Charisma, 2 Intelligence, 12 Agility, and 4 Luck. This is a level 33 build that I've put together. This isn't to say it can't come together a little earlier, or that it won't work past this point, it's merely the stage I got to where I was happy with everything about the build. For perks with this build, I'll be splitting it up into essential perks, ones you must have for the build to work, and recommended perks, those that help the build out but aren't as much of a priority. To start off in essential, we have Gladiator, Expert Gladiator, and Martial Artist. Gladiator adds a damage boost to melee and is utterly critical for this character. We rely on our sword to deal high damage, so the key is to try and max this out. I personally had Gladiator maxed out and the first rank of Expert Gladiator, adding up to plus 30% damage. Obviously, once you level up more, you'll also want to get the Master Gladiator perk too. The Martial Artist perk lowers melee weapon weight and also increases the swing speed. The swing speed is the important part here. Not only does it increase DPS with a sword, but it helps ensure you get your sneak attack multiplier by creating less of a build up to the swing. You don't want the enemy to get alerted a split second too late, so the quicker you can hit them the better. Our next essential perk is Lone Wanderer in Charisma. I used all four Charisma points for this one, maxing it out. This means that, when travelling alone, you gain 30% action point regen and take 20% less damage. This is a build much more suited to solo play than in a group, so this perk is a real benefit that makes up for not having a team to back you up. Agility is the last place we have essential perks, but we've got a fair few here. Gunslinger and Expert Gunslinger are both here to increase our revolver damage. The first rank to both of these are critical, but if you find yourself using the gun a fair bit, you might want to raise them higher. We also have Ninja, Covert Operative, and Sneak. These are the most important perks in this build. This trio is what makes a stealth-based character. Sneak is a pretty self-explanatory perk. The more ranks you have, the harder you are to detect. I had this perk at rank 2, which made me 50% harder to detect while sneaking. Ninja and Covert Operative then boost your sneak attack damage with melee weapons and ranged weapons respectively. I had Ninja at rank 2 and Covert Operative at the first rank. This meant I was dealing 2.6 times damage with stealth melee attacks, and 2.15 times damage with stealth attacks when using my gun. Ninja is definitely the higher boost regardless, so is arguably more important, but don't forget about Covert Operative, as the extra damage can often be the difference between one-shotting an enemy, or just alerting them to your presence. The essential perks weren't all that numerous, but that just means there's plenty more room for recommended perks. To kick off we head to Strength, where we have Barbarian and Carry Weight perks. Now, carry weight perks is a bit generic, but that is on purpose. The point of this is I want you to make your own mind up about which carry weight perks are most valuable to you. Chances are you'll have a spare point or two in strength tree, so use these slots to help manage carry weight. I will have a link to the Nukes Dragon page for this build in the description, so if you want to see the carry perks I went for, take a look there. The Barbarian perk increases damage resistance based on strength. With 10 strength, this will boost us with an extra 20 damage resistance. This isn't game-changing, but it's a nice little boost that can help keep you alive. In Perception, we have five different perks. To start off, we have Picklock and Expert Picklock. Want to pick level 2 locks? Easy. Sorted. The idea I tend to go with behind this is having more options open to you to navigate the world, but more often than not, these perks just lead to more loot. Additionally, I included Butcher's Bounty, Concentrated Fire, and Crack Shot. A lot of cooked meat gives a lot of bonuses to this build. Boosts to strength and melee are easy to come by in cooked meals. Getting more meat from your kills gives you more good foods to happily consume without having to worry that you're running low. 
Concentrated Fire is here mostly for those of you who enjoy using bats. This perk only works with your secondary weapon, but being able to target limbs and bats can be pretty helpful. After all, why shoot someone in the torso when you can shoot them in the head? Finally, we have Crack Shot, which increases pistol accuracy and range while sighted. You'll want to make sure you don't miss shots when in stealth. This perk makes it a fair sight easier to be certain that you're going to land that ranged headshot when you need to. On to Endurance now, where I had the Aquagirl perk. You only have a single point to put an Endurance perk down, and this is the one I find most helpful. Takes rads less often, and use water as an escape route. This is more a quality of life and convenience perk than anything else, so don't worry about switching this out if you have something you prefer. In the Intelligence tree, I'd recommend First Aid and Makeshift Warrior. First Aid boosts the effectiveness of Stimpaks, and Makeshift Warrior reduces how quickly your sword breaks. These are just little boosts to the character. They aren't going to provide huge changes, but they do just add some nice improvements. In Agility, I have Thruhiker and Gunrunner. I personally decided to max out Thruhiker as I was carrying around a lot of food and drink with me, and wanted to ensure it was all as light as possible. This is a perk I pretty much always go for, as you gotta eat, and carry weight is a real issue at times in the game. The Gunrunner perk increases your speed with a pistol equipped. Want to get somewhere faster? Bring your revolver out and you get a nice little speed boost. Stealth builds tend to be kinda slow, so I wanted something that let you travel around faster without having to compromise your stealth, and this perk fitted perfectly. Finally, we head to Luck, with Starch Jeans and Good with Salt. Starch Jeans lets you control your mutations, a huge benefit for literally any character, as once you have the right combination of mutations, you can just keep this rank 2 perk card equipped, and you won't lose the mutations you already have, or gain any you don't want. Good with Salt reduces how quickly your food spoils. I've mentioned a couple of times now that food is particularly helpful in this game, especially for this build. With this perk, your food remains edible for a longer amount of time, meaning you're dealing with spoiled items less frequently. The weapons for this build are the Blade of Bastet and the Voice of Set. These are both gained through the Order of Mysteries questline and are weapons based around the equipment of the Mistress of Mystery herself. The Blade will be your main weapon, it's a sword with armour penetration as it's built in effect. You can deal a significant amount of stealth damage with this blade, and it also does pretty well in open combat if it comes to it. The Voice of Set is a unique revolver that does additional electric damage to robots. It honestly isn't that great of a weapon for the most part. For a stealth build in particular, it has the big disadvantage of not coming with a suppressor, which means you can break your stealth by firing it. It does however provide a ranged option to deal with enemies, and the extra damage versus robots is quite useful if you find yourself surrounded by gutsies and robo-brains. Arguably, the biggest disadvantage to these weapons is they can't be modified in any way. This is great if you hate crafting or gathering plenty of resources, but it's bad in the sense that what you get is what you get. You're not going to be able to use all the mods you've learnt to improve these weapons in any way. Our armour with this build is the Garb of Mysteries and Eye of Ra. The Garb of Mysteries adds a point of perception and provides a small amount of damage and energy resistance. It also takes up all clothing and armour slots, which makes it kind of suck. All in all, the various pieces of equipment are pretty terrible. That is, until you equip the Eye of Ra. This unique item boosts all of your other gear. For the sword, it raises the armour penetration to 100. For the voice of set, it adds a stun chance against robots. And for the garb, it makes you 20% harder to detect. This final effect is the most important, as it greatly improves the stealth capability of the build helping ensure we can be an effective stealth melee character. As a final note for equipment, I want to recommend using stealth boys and phantom devices as much as you can. You won't actually see me use any in the footage, as I was trying to gather hallucinogen gas canisters to make myself more phantom devices, but never got around to it in the end. Even without them, this build worked fairly well, but if you find them and use them, you'll have a much easier time with the character. For mutations, I have a couple of suggestions. The first is Twisted Muscles. This adds plus 25% melee damage, as well as a better chance to cripple limbs. The boost to melee damage is obviously incredibly helpful for a stealth melee build, which relies on strong single hit damage. The downside is minus 50% accuracy with guns, but this can be somewhat mitigated with the Crackshot perk if needed. The other mutation I want to recommend would be Chameleon. I say want to, as I don't know if the chameleon effect will actually work with the Garb of Mysteries or not. If it works with this, it's great, as you can then turn invisible while standing still. But if it doesn't work with the Garb, then it's kind of useless. 
This build is Stealth Melee with a gun for additional support. Stealth Melee is a pretty simple idea to understand, but it can be difficult to actually use this playstyle effectively. Chances are this character will be a bit of a split. You'll either love being stealthy and slowly picking off enemies, or you won't be able to stand it. You want to try and hit each enemy with a Stealth Melee attack. This means you need to get up close without getting detected. On top of that, you want to make sure you stay hidden after you've attacked, meaning you can't fight effectively against a cluster of enemies. Instead, you want to try and get them to disperse and pick off the stragglers. After each kill, you need to work out what to do in order to stay undetected. If there's other enemies nearby, chances are you want to back away and duck behind some cover. Ensure they don't have a line of sight and aren't searching before you attack again. In a perfect world, you'll take them all down one at a time without ever leaving hidden. You do have a gun which can pick off foes at range, but I recommend avoiding doing this unless you have to. A close-up attack with your sword is much more likely to result in a quick kill, whereas the gun will simply remove your hidden status and start a firefight. This isn't to say you can never use the gun, it's very helpful if you physically can't reach a target, and can also come in handy if a firefight does break out, allowing you to get off six range shots as you either approach the enemy to take them out up close, or to help with a fighting retreat. Speaking of which, don't be afraid to fall back and try and regain your hidden status if a situation goes south. The last thing you want is to be dealing with open combat, so if you can turn the situation back to your advantage, don't hesitate to do so. As a final point on playstyle, I want to add in the importance of recon and surveillance. I carried around a pair of binoculars with me at all times. Despite the fact they don't actually zoom in all that much, they still reminded me to scope out fights before I got involved, ensuring I knew where enemies were, what weapons I was going up against, and when the best time to strike would be. The Mistress was born and raised within Vault 76. Growing up in the Vault could be pretty boring at times, but she quickly found a way to spend her time. Her parents had a huge collection of Unstoppables comics that she would read over and over again, until she could recite every word. She held a particular fondness for the Mistress of Mysteries, the only female member of the superhero group. She looked up to her, and aspired to one day be just like her hero. For the most part, her parents were fine with her reading so much, and the games she played. It was good to see a happy child in the vault, and it would do wonders for morale. As she grew up, she kept her fascination with the crime-fighting crusader, listening to the radio shows with her, and flying through the pages of comics until the corners were all but worn away. She always wished there was more for her to learn about the superheroine, but the bombs dropping had meant the creation of light entertainment dropped pretty low on the list of what survivors focused on. When she left the vault, she had to learn to survive. vault Tech training was enough for her to manage the bare essentials, but she decided she wanted to become more like her hero, training herself to use a sword she found whilst travelling, and trying to master the art of stealth. Eventually, she stumbled across a dead woman, wearing a dress that bore a striking resemblance to that of her idol. Moving on from this lead, she eventually came across Riverside Manor, where she realised that all her training could be put to good use. Thank you all very much for watching my latest build. I hope you all enjoyed my rendering of a Mistress of Mysteries character. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.